guys. How's everybody doing? Good. How many of you have escaped the maze? Wow, great job, guys. Way to be thinking. How many of you are still, so we're still working? Still working on it? A few of you? All right, well, we still have some things to, to figure out because even if we've made it through the maze, there are still these nasty things that we have to deal with that are trying to kill us, and that's a problem, right? Usually if there's something chasing me that wants to kill me, that's a problem. Yeah, sounds pretty terrifying. So we are going to try to figure out a way to get past these grievers because they are nasty, they are mean, and they are ugly, and we need to do something about it. So are we ready to put our brains together and figure out how to get past the grievers? Yes, I see thumbs up. Are you guys just exhausted from running through the maze? Is that the problem? We're suffering from low calorie intake and we have expended all of our energy and we just want to make it through. Okay, so before we figure out how to defeat the grievers, I think we need to talk about what they are. Because we're gonna design an anti-griever. So you guys ready to do some design work? You guys ready to think? We're gonna engineer something that will help us get past the grievers so that we can all live. Because I don't know about you, but I'd like to live through the maze. Granted, there might be some other nasty things we have to deal with, but we wanna make it through the maze. Okay, so how do we want to think about and approach this problem? Because the gladers have a problem, right? What's the problem that they have to deal with? Not only have they needed to figure out how to get through the maze, they've had to figure out how to deal with the fact that they have no memory, but now they have another problem to deal with. What's our problem? What's our problem? Grievers. Grievers. And what are, what are grievers, what are they? Who can describe what a griever is? Who wants to describe what a griever is? Go ahead. Half creature, half machine. And what, what do we know about grievers? What do they have that, that are kind of scary? Knives, spikes, instruments, everything nasty that, that we might want to deal with? Well, before we get started on trying to figure out how we're going to design an anti-griever, we need to really understand what a griever is. So I'm gonna ask James to come on up for us and read us the passage that describes the grievers. Don't sound so excited, come on. Wow, I wrote this book, that's kinda of cool. You guys having fun? Sweet, this is one of the coolest uh, events I've ever been to. So whoever's in charge, good job. Yeah, give him a big round of applause. All right. So, this is how I described the Grievers. And just wait till you see them in the movie. They are awesome. They will scar you for life. You'll have nightmares. Um, so, okay. Thomas stared in horror at the monstrous thing making its way down the long corridor of the maze. It looked like an experiment gone terribly wrong, something from a nightmare. Part animal, part machine, the griever rolled and clicked along the stone pathway. Its body resembled a gigantic slug, sparsely covered in hair and glistening with slime. Grotesquely pulsating in and out as it breathed. Isn't that just lovely? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to curl up with that and go to bed every night? Every day, every we need to make griever dolls that are very realistic. It had no distinguishable head or tail, but front to end it was at least six feet long, four feet thick. Every 10 to 15 seconds, sharp metal spikes popped through its bulbous flesh and the whole creature abruptly curled into a ball and spun forward. It also, I'm skipping ahead. 
Several randomly placed mechanical arms stuck out here and there, each one with a different purpose. A few had bright lights attached to them. Others had long, menacing needles. One had a three-fingered claw that clasped and unclasped for no apparent reason. So that's probably good enough. So uh, very lovely little things that uh, are very nice to people, right? No, not so nice. I would not want to meet one of these guys in real life, but uh, they're, I don't know how I came up with them, but I wanted something in the maze that was terrifying, but not something we'd heard of before, like goblins or trolls or vampires or whatever. So that's where the grievers came from. So good luck building your anti-griever, okay? Well, I don't know about you, but I am thoroughly terrified. Those things give me nightmares and just blah. I mean, let, let's take a look at, let, let's dissect these things a little bit and see what we're dealing with. Because this isn't just something that has a pincher. This isn't something that just has a needle. It has sharp metal spikes that come in and out. It has... It spins forward, so it moves fast. So we have to figure out how are we going to deal with the speed and get away from it. It's got a body like a gigantic slimy slug. It's six feet long, four feet thick, and it's got these randomly placed mechanical arms that do all kinds of nasty things. Yikes. I, it's bad enough that I can't get through the maze, but now I have this thing chasing me. And it's got bright lights, and it clicks and whirs, and moans like a dying man. So I'm just too scared right now. I don't want to talk about this. So we're going to talk about something else. So I'm going to change gears, and, and we're going to talk about something that's not so scary. Who can tell me what an engineer does? Do you notice how I just shifted that? Because I don't want to deal with this, so I'm blocking it out. We're going to talk about problem solving. Who knows what an engineer does? And if anybody tells me drives a train, that is the incorrect answer that I'm looking for. But what does an engineer do? They design and make things, right? Who else can tell me what an engineer does? Engineer, they make like tools that design other things. They make tools and design things. So, so why? Why do they make things? Why do they make things? To solve problems. To solve problems. Exactly. Engineers solve problems. That is one of the main purposes that they're around. So what kinds of engineers are there? Who can name off some different, way in the back, give me an engineer. A what was it? A mechanical engineer. What's another engineer? Train engineer. I knew that that was coming. I guess that is a legitimate answer. Yes, there's a train engineer. What's another type of engineer? Industrial then engineer. Industrial. Thank you for someone to say industrial. I was an industrial engineer. I guess I still am an industrial engineer. An industrial engineer is engineer systems. It's kind of one of those less known ones. Let's see, who has, right there in the front. Not you, right there, yeah. Electrical, it drives a train. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of different types of engineers. So if we've got all of these engineers, what kind of tools do they have to help them solve problems? If their goal is to solve a problem, what tools do they have? What do they use? Right in the middle. They use their brain. They use their brain. Yes, what else do they use? What else do they use? They use their hands. Anything else? Computers, they use math, they use science, they use all of this to solve problems. Um, but they don't just go at this kind of willy-nilly. One of the things about engineering is there is a process. No matter what kind of engineer you are, there is a set systematic process in how you think about problem solving. And there are two tools that we forget about that's in every engineer's, hand, every engineer's toolbox, and that's creativity and it's teamwork. If we look at the Gladers, they worked together as a team, right? It is very rare for an engineer to try to solve a problem by themselves. Many engineers, whether it's electrical, whether it's industrial, mechanical, aeronautical, they all have kind of a very specific field of understanding, and working together, they can solve these bigger problems. When we come to the idea of creativity, they're solving problems and trying to come up with things that have never been thought of before. So being incredibly creative is another skill that every engineer has to have. 
To solve these problems, they go through an engineering design process. No matter what the problem is that they're trying to solve, going through a systematic process helps them think about and apply and test their different problem or their different solutions. So let's take a look at the process. We've got identify the problem, research and brainstorm, build, test, and if it doesn't work, we improve, and then continue the cycle. So does everyone see this isn't just a build and you're done. It's a lot of trial and error. In engineering, the, sometimes you'll hear the fail early, fail often. We learn from our mistakes. We improve, we get better, and we continue the cycle till we have a solution that works, and then we present and move on. So if we think about this from the Glader's point of view, what's our problem? Grievers, it's a problem. So what, what do we, we've identified the problem. We have to survive these nasty, scary, things, right? So the next thing we have to do is identify what are some of the resources we have at our disposal. So we're in the Glade. Do we have a computer? Do we have a 3D printer? I wish we did. There's a lot of things we don't have, so we need to kind of take stock of what we do have and the materials that we can work with. The other thing we want to do is restore and brainstorm. So we're going to walk through, we're going to design an anti-griever. So let's, we've identified our problem. We need to somehow defend against this nasty thing that is very scary and can do us great bodily harm. And we need to do it with limited resources. And we need to do it in, in a timely manner. <laughs> and we don't have a lot of testing we can do. So let's do some research. Where do engineers usually draw their inspiration? Okay, not literally draw. Where do they get it? What do they get inspired by? Where do they find their ideas? Through problems in society? Cartoon Network? That's actually, it can happen. Where else can we get our inspiration from? What was that? How about nature? Nature? Can we look around us? Good engineers try to take ideas they see in one context, change it and apply it to another context. So if we think about animals or things that defend, you know, animals are, have some of the best defense mechanisms. So we're going to come and we're going to learn some lessons from some of the nasty beasties that are already out there because there are some scary things in real life. And some of them have tools or um, defense mechanisms that we can really learn from and incorporate into, into our design. So we're going to walk through just kind of a quick tour of some of these things. And while we're doing this, start jotting down some ideas that you might want to use in your anti-griever machine. So if you see something, you're like, oh, that would be great to stop those needles. Or that is exactly what we need in order to combat that, that pinchy claw. Because that pinchy claw is kind of scary. Or the saw. So let's take a look at what nature has for uh, kind of some creepy, dangerous animals. So here's a Yeti crab. It's got some hairy pincher arms. Um, it protects, these arms protect it from toxic fluids, and it helps the blind animal sense. So, you know, think about what are some defense mechanisms and, and tools that this really cool creature has. Here's a frogfish. It changes texture and color to blend in, so it hides. It has a fishing rod to lure in prey. And then it uses fins to waddle along the sea floor. So it has kind of a different mode of transportation. Anything in there that could help us with a griever? I don't know. An octopus. So we've got a defense mechanism of releasing black ink to do camouflage, to kind of hide it from its prey. It changes colors. And it can shut off an appendage. I don't think we can actually lose an arm to protect ourselves from grievers, but maybe our machine can do something to, that's similar. Uh, a basket star. Many branch-like arms to trap things. Uh, it, can look, it can trap food and other things as the current passes through it. So I don't know, anybody getting any inspiration? Are you feeling inspired yet? Any, see anything that can help us? Remember, think creatively. Just because it's used this way for this animal, how might we take that and apply it in our setting? Because that's where the creativity comes. The pinecone fish, 
It has luminous bacteria that creates natural headlamps so it can shine on its prey, using lights to blind and to confuse, so it can also find things at night. We've got a flamingo tongue snail. That's kind of cool. Feeds on toxic sea fans, uses their venom, so it takes something that another prey has and uses it again. Um, colorful patterns, so it hides. So I'm hearing a lot about camouflage. I'm hearing a lot about uh, confusing what's coming after it or confusing its prey so it can either get away or attack. Anybody hearing anything that might be useful? The box jellyfish, it's almost invisible. I don't see it up there, do you see it? It's like right there. The flying fish, so it distracts predators by using reflection. So again, we've got another distraction technique. Um, Wing-like fins that soar over water, so it flies. It has a mode of transportation that's faster than some of its prey. And we have a stonefish that really is good at camouflage, so it hides. Was camouflage used in the book as a griever defense? Does anyone remember? We tried to do some hiding, right? It also has a fatal sting. The platypus. Anyone seen Perry? Sorry. Where's Perry? So we've got a platypus that is, looks cute and harmless. That kind of went right over everybody's head. Perry the platypus. It's <laughs> perfect Phineas and Ferb reference, and it went right over. Um, this one has some spurs and hidden spikes that can attack and cause pain and completely put the, the animal that is defending itself out. So it render, renders them harmless. We've got some Gila monsters, which are aggressive and they aim to wound when threatened. So I think we've got a lot of inspiration we can draw from nature. Does anybody have any other animal that they can think of that might have something useful that we could learn from and incorporate into our design? What do you think? A which kind of dragon? The kimono dragon. And what does the kimono dragon have? Poisonous teeth. Yes. And it has teeth and it has poison. Any other animals? An elephant, How could an el what could we learn from an elephant that we might need to defeat our grievers? What was that? Stomping? Anything else? The trunk? So it's got the movable, there we go. Anything else? A rhino, what, what does a rhino have that we could use? So it's got a horn for defense, but it also has very thick skin, which can protect it from anything sharp, or another rhino's horn, so we've got some ideas. You guys have a task. Your teams are your teams on your table. So you guys, we've already identified the problem. We've seen what these grievers have. We know what we have to defend against. We kind of have a feel that we kind of have some limited resources. On your table to design your prototype, you are gonna have very limited resources. So you're going to use your resources, you're gonna brainstorm. So we're gonna do, we've done our research, now we need to move to brainstorm. Take all of these ideas, as crazy as they may be, and that is the thing with brainstorming to remember. There is no wrong answer. You can get crazy. Throw out any idea. Your life is depending on this. Because if you can't get past the griever, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of rough. So any crazy idea. Then as a table, you come together and decide which pieces are feasible that fit within your constraints and work on a design. Wait, guys, we're not done. We're not done. There's more to this process. So once you have decided on a design, and you can use the iPads to try to help you sketch, you're going to build a prototype. So we've got some materials over here. We've got tin foil. You've got masking tape. You're going to try to build a prototype to, to test your design. Every good engineer goes through a test and design cycle. And then we're going to bring out the grievers, and you're going to test it. Because, so then we're going to bring out the grievers and we're going to... No, we don't have grievers here for you to test it. Sorry. Darn. So we're going to just build our prototype, but our next step would be to do some testing, see if it could defend against some things, and continue the cycle until we have got something that works and that can save us from our grievers. All right, guys, you have five minutes to brainstorm your ideas. Once you get done brainstorming, work with your team to pick a design and start sketching and designing your anti-griever device. At that time, while you guys are designing, we will start
distributing some of your materials so then you can start building.